All right, so let's get back to retrieving more data using the Alpaca API. If you remember in a previous video, we wrapped the Alpaca API using API sauce, and we created two methods called get account and get positions. In this video, I'm gonna use get positions and display each of our stock positions inside of what's called a flat list. So you see right now on the right, we finished uh, displaying the account information, but now we have this big section reserved for positions. So we want our positions to look like this listing here. And you see how each position has custom formatting, it's highlighted, and it shows the symbol uh, nice and big, it shows how many shares we own and at what price. So how do we format our positions to look like this? Well, React Native provides a component called flat list. So if you look at flat list, um, an example here, it's a flat list component and it takes a couple of things. First, data. So you need a list of data, which th the list of data would be our position data that comes from Alpaca. Then you need render item. And what render item is, you just define a custom function that uh, tells React Native how to display a single one of the items in that list. So we need to tell, we need to provide a component or just the, the JSX to display a single row here. And it'll apply that single row styling to every row in our flat list. And the third, there's this attribute called key extractor, and basically each row in this list needs to have a unique ID, and so we'll provide a, a unique ID for each of uh, our positions here. And for our positions, we're just going to use the asset ID uh, for the uh, for the for the key for each of these items in the list. All right, so let's get started. So first, let's see if we can pull uh, the positions from Alpaca and just write it to the console before we style it. So I'm gonna go over to the code. And you see, uh, previously we have component did mount and we have api.getaccount, okay? And so we defined that previously under services and alpaca.js. And you see we have get account, but we also have get positions. So we're gonna use get positions here. So let's do api.getpositions, then, and then we have a, a response so that's a parameter coming back. And then we're gonna console log the response here, see what that looks like. So we're gonna reload, should reload our page, and then we'll retrieve our positions. All right, so if we look here, I'm scrolling up, you'll see uh, I have a list here of positions. Um, this is the console, and so it's dot data. And then you see here we have an array, which is a list, and we have a list of all of our positions. And so you see uh, today is December 27th. Uh, I decided to sell our Apple and Microsoft. We had a great run, as you saw in the previous videos. And now we're gonna go short and just give that a try. Let's just say we think um, the market is overbought. Um, so if you look, you see that you know SPY went from uh, in October 2900 to 3240, 3250 pretty quick. So we're gonna go short. And then, so I just bought some new positions today just so we have a longer positions list and some more account history to display. So you see I bought symbol UVXY, TZA, which is ultra short, uh, I believe the small caps. And then we have a QID, which is uh, shorting the technology, shorting the queues. And JNUG, which is just gold, uh, gold, junior gold mining ETF. So these are saying there's going to be some volatility and into the new year that we're going to have uh, a drawdown and that uh, stocks are going to go down. So not really a prediction, but kind of. Um, so let's display these positions that I just bought and let's display them um, in a flat list. So I got the positions coming back. And so now I can just do this dot set state and then in our initial state here, I'll just do an empty list for positions. So our screen renders at first, there's no positions, but then after the component mounts and we retrieve our positions, then we uh, set um, our positions. So if response is okay, then we can set state. And let's just say positions response dot data. So it's a response from get positions. Okay. And so that should retrieve our positions. So how do we know if that worked? Let's go ahead and dump these um, on the screen as well. So I'm gonna change this to a flat list in a moment, uh, but let's do this. I'm gonna do this.state.positions.map position. And then I'm just gonna 
let's see, return um, text. And let's just see if my position has a symbol here. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I return position.symbol. So we're looping. This is like if you did it with a loop. So we're mapping each position to um, a text component and displaying the symbols. So you see I'm correctly uh, displaying the symbols for the stocks that I own. I'm giving a little warning here about not having a key. So we're going to handle that. So I'm going to change this code to use a flat list. So instead of doing a loop here, we're going to do a flat list component. And flat list, uh, I'm gonna have to import it, so it's part of React Native. So if I do flat list, it should show up. And then I'll do flat list here. All right, so what do we need? So data equals this.state.positions, which we have. And then we have render item equals, and this is a function. So I'm gonna define this fun function separately. So I'm gonna call the function render row. And I'm going to set my key extractor. And so this just says for each item, which attribute of the object um, has a unique key. So I'm going to do a map item to item.assetID. So if you see in our position list earlier, um, you see there's a unique asset ID for symbol UVXY. There's a unique asset ID for TZA. Okay, so item asset ID. And then so I need a render row function. So let's Let's define that, and we'll just do it uh, in the class right here. But you can we're, we'll probably separate out all these sections as as a React component gets really big and has too much information. We're going to eventually want to move all these views out to individual JavaScript files. But also for simplicity of a video, you know, I want to keep a lot of this in one file just so you see it all come together, and you don't have to like poke around to like a hundred different files that are all subdivided. Okay, so render row, and this is going to be a function. And it's going to return uh, the display um, however we want to display an individual row. So we're going to return. And then so we'll do a view. And then so we can do a, a key of item.assetID. And then inside of this, let's see how we've drawn it. We have um, the symbol and the number of shares and the average price on the left. And then we have another cell on the right that takes up just a little bit of space. So we're going to say this cell, uh, using our flex box, is going to take about 80%. So we'll do like a flex of four. And then this will be like a flex of one. So four is 80%. And then the one would be 20%. And then we're having this flex direction of row. So let's let's do that. So um, we have a view, key of asset ID. And I'm going to look at my notes. Um, so we have a style equals. And then we're going we're gonna to create styles for these. So this will be like our left cell. So positions left cell. Okay, so there'll be a view like that. And then we'll do a view and then the style equals dashboard style. Style.positions right cell. Okay. And then this could just be style equals um, dashboard style dot positions. Okay, so we'd have it divided up into two chunks. And then we can display the item symbol on the left and then the item uh, price. And let me remember where that is. Un, it's under uh, current price. So it'll be current price. Okay. So that'll be current price. And let's see if that works. I'm, sure, I'm assuming we'll get an error of some sort. So what does that say? No op. Can't find variable item. Okay. Oh yeah. So into the render row function, you get item. So um, I need to actually receive this as a function um, argument. So now that I have item like that, let's see if we get it. Um, text strings must be rendered in a text component. So we'll do that. So text. So we'll put the current price in text. And we'll put the symbol in text. All right, run it again. And you see we have the symbol and the price next to it. And then we have our styles reference, but they're not defined actually. So we need to find position left cell, positions right cell, and positions. Positions. Okay. So. Um, positions, let's see, 
we'll do positions here, positions. And then this is flex direction row, right? Because we want a left and a right cell. And then we want positions left cell. And then we want flex of four. And then positions right cell. Flex one, comma there. Let's see now, right. So let me see if we can reload the app. Let's see if this works. All right, not quite yet. Okay, on positions, we actually need flex of one, and that lets it know um, that it's using a flex box for this outer container. So now you see that we have the symbol on the left and the price on the right. Um, let's go ahead and add uh, some more data. So we have the symbol, and then we can also put the um, number of shares that we own. And let me get a quick reminder of what is that called? We have last equity, that's my account. And then we have our positions. So we got our current price, and then we can do our cost basis, average entry price. I like average entry price, and we have a quantity. So we'll do average entry price and quantity. Okay, so we'll do item dot quantity at item dot average entry price. So we'll have that. And then we'll also show the amount it's changed. So item dot. And so this will be the change today. And I believe you need to multiply that times 100. So I'll do change today times 100. If it reloads again, you'll see a JNUG. Okay, and you see it's a long decimal, so let's go ahead and round that. So we can use two fixed, so I'll do two fixed two. How about that? All right, so that chops it off, and so you see um, UVXY 2.53, let's see what we have. Google, yeah, so 2.45, that seems around right, depending on um, when the quote was retrieved. So TZA 1.42, so you see our positions are up a little bit, um, except for JNUG, which is down. So our gold is going down. So here's all our data from positions. We're retrieving positions from the Alpaca API. And so let's make our rows look a little bit better. So we have positions. Um, so I'm going to call this position, actually, because it's actually just one position. So let me change my style here. I'm just going to put position. And then each position row, um, let's put a little bit of spacing. So let's do a margin of five. Let's do a border around it. So we'll do border width one. All right, we have a little bit of a border here. And then we can also do, let's see, what else do we want? Let's do a padding of five. So we got a little bit of padding around that. And then let's also do like a border radius. So border radius, I believe it is. Let's see if this works. And this gives it kind of a rounded look. So we'll just add that for a little bit of style. And then the left cell, we can do font size 20. I don't think that'll work. Let's actually make uh, some classes just for the text. So I'll do symbol. And we'll say the symbol should be um, font size 16. Okay. And so file or style, sorry, uh, symbol. So where's our symbol? So we have our render row, and then we have our symbol. So we'll do style equals dashboard style dot symbol. Let's see how that looks. It's a nice little bit bigger. And then we can make that bold. So symbol font weight bold. And then let's do color as well. 
And let's make this a gray, just to kind of make it. We want to change the fonts a little bit to to make it a little. We want the eye to focus on what we want to read. So I like the account being very bold. So I'm going to do like a dark gray here. Actually, I'll do black on the symbol here, but then the the subheading. So subheading. Let's make that a little bit lighter than the actual symbol. So we'll do color, pound, 80880. And so if we do that, so we have the subheading style equals dashboard style dot subheading. Okay, and you see it's like a slightly lighter color. And then this price, let's make the price a little bit bigger. So we'll just call this actually, uh, no, I'll keep it separate. Um, let's do um, subheading and I'll do, I'll reuse the subheading here, dashboard style dot subheading. And then we'll do style equals um, dashboard style dot uh, price. All right. And so price will be similar to symbol in that it will be font size 16, font weight bold, and then let's make color green and see how that looks. All right, so you see the color is green here, and then this subheading's color is gray. So that's not that we're getting close to what we want. Um, I think we also want, let's go ahead and put an icon in as well. So we can do Ionicons. So that should give us an arrow. So if we want to do import, um, we get this nice set of icons um, from Expo. So we can do React, or no, Vector Icons. And that'll give us an arrow. And so let me see if I can use that. Um, so it's Ionicons. So under render row next to the price or the change today, um, let's go ahead and use that. So we'll do this. We'll do Ionicons and its name equals, and there's a complete list of these online if you want to use different arrows, but I'm going to use this one. And then we'll do size equals some size. So I did 32 and then color equals green. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so now you see we have a down arrow. We can do an up arrow. All right. Um, and so you see we're doing pretty well. I'll do drop up. I think it's a little more compact. So you can see we're getting very close to what we want. Uh, the video is running a little bit long though, so I'm gonna cut it off here. And we'll have a whole separate section just on really polishing, uh, fine tuning this. What we wanna do is see if the price went up or down and then show this in red or green. So I'll show you how, how to add uh, styles conditionally and how to uh, style and uh, combine two styles. So you can do actually a list of styles. So have the base style plus red or green for up and down. Um, and then we'll put like a heading on here, but uh, that's it. Um, we're going to add the indexes in the next video in this flex direction row. And then we'll do one video where we just finish this all out, color the heading and make it a little more polished. All right. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.